most people stop at no, and that's one of the reasons for why a lot of people aren't successful. Uh, so, you know, that's something that not just I am a, a huge believer in, in uh, but I make sure that, you know, everybody in my company, my sales folks, my driver support, operations, creative, all of them, uh, make sure that persistence is something that persists through our culture. Welcome to Growth Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Do you want your employees to have more persistence throughout the culture? This is not just a sales thing. Yep. Persistence is something you need throughout the organization. In sales, we're taught that no is never no. It's always not right now. And you keep pushing on those relationships, adding value where you can. You're not looking to be annoying. You're looking to truly create the relationship. And you can't do that if you stop. Persistence is something necessary for your growth as a leader, but also your, your culture. You want people to push beyond their, their, their barriers of uncomfortableness so that they grow and they learn how to find how to be persistent when it matters most. Well, today we're going to be talking with the founder and CEO of Rapify. His name is James Heller. Their company has grown uh, number 309 on the Inc. list, 14,068% um, over a three-year period, um, almost $3 million in revenue, but they've, they're, they're really closing faster on faster growth. And the reason why they've done it is through persistence. Today we talk with James about you know, why that matters and, and really what to do when people aren't being persistent and how he handles that inside the culture of his company, Growing Fast. So tune in to the full interview with James. Thanks for tuning in here to Grow Think Tank. Really excited about sharing this with you. And before you run, I have done so many interviews of the last few weeks. I have such a, an exciting time to share with you that those interviews have been organized into the 12 core principles of fast growth companies. So all you have to do to get that is go to genehammett.com slash worksheet. And so you can get the 12 principles and I've been able to uh, go in there and find which episodes will align to each individual episode. When you subscribe to Growth Think Tank, you will find exactly what you need so that you can move forward. And many of them haven't been published yet, depending on when you're hearing this, but you can you can tune in to the date that means the most to you. Now, here is the interview with James. Hi, James. How are you? Excellent. How about yourself? I'm fantastic. Excited to have you here at Growth Think Tank. Uh, I want to dive in with you right away. I've already told the audience a little bit about you personally as a leader and some of the work you're doing, but tell us about Rapify. What, what, what space are you in and what are you doing? So Rapify is an ad platform that is part of the gig economy. And what we effectively do is provide everyday consumer drivers, ride sharing drivers and folks that want to monetize their time on the road with the ability to make money by advertising on their vehicle. And on the brand side, we provide brands with the ability to measure what that exposure actually does for their brand in terms of conversion on their website, conversion in app, as well as retail foot traffic. And then we also connect that out of home exposure to digital retargeting across multiple channels, including connected TV, audio streaming, native, mobile and display. Well, I love the fact that it's not just, um, you know, a physical thing, but you're doing all this tracking to get results. That must be reason why you have so many employees. Um, yeah. It, it's also the reason for why, you know, all the brands behind me and the brands that, you know, leverage us continue to leverage us is because they could actually measure, you know, what the dollars spent on Rapify actually do for their brand. How many employees do you have, James? Uh, we just actually hired a couple. So I think we're 28 or 27 or 28 today. It's always the same. Fast growing companies are not quite sure because they're always in the midst of hiring someone. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're growing. You know, we talked last week about, about your business, about the fast growth behind that and some of the core uh, parts of leadership and culture. And, and you mentioned persistence. Why is persistence such an important thing in your culture? Well, one of the things I learned about persistence early on is uh, just because somebody says no doesn't necessarily mean the answer is no forever. Uh, it, it's you know it might not it might not be 
yes today, but it could be no, or could be yes, you know, shortly thereafter. The other thing I've also learned is uh, most people stop at no, and that's one of the reasons for why a lot of people aren't successful. Uh, so, you know, that's something that not just I am a, a huge believer in, in uh, but I make sure that, you know, everybody in my company, my sales folks, my driver support, operations, creative, all of them, uh, make sure that persistence is something that persists through our culture. Now, persistence and, and some of the examples you gave are, are known inside of sales, right? One of the, the things I've worked with companies on is that most of the business comes after seven no's. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh, some of our biggest clients initially told us they would never, ever. In fact, I have one, one brand client that told us they would never, ever use Rapify ever. Like those are their actual words. And uh, we, we build north of a million dollars with them in 2019. I love it. Uh, what are you doing with the other parts of the organization to, to ensure that they're persistent? Because it's not just sales that needs to be persistent. Right. Yeah. And I mean, another thing, one of my mentors, Bill Applebaum, he, uh, he, he, he's one of the proponents of, uh, a two word, one slide deck at an all hands meeting he held when he took the reins at a, a large media company. And those two words were everyone sells. Uh, and, and I think that that's important to, to keep in mind when you're a founder, because, you know, if, if just your sales organization knows how to sell and understands, you know, the value props of your product, um, you end up having a disconnect internally. Um, and so making sure persistence is something that isn't just a sales organizational thing. It's something that, that you know, is, is, is spread throughout the organization is super important because it keeps everybody working towards a common goal. It keeps everybody uh, thematically talking the same way about, you know, your, your product or what it is you're doing at your company. So, you know, it's something that I'm a, a huge believer in. I want to get some of the details behind this because, you know, our audience is, is fast growth leaders that want to get strategies. So what steps did you take to ensure that you have a, you know, persistence throughout your culture? Well, I think part of it is when we're onboarding a, a new employee or when they're getting used to like, you know, what we, what we're actually building here, what, whatever their respective job is at Rapify. Um, when we notice, at least initially, when we notice somebody, uh, I, I hate saying giving up, but like, that's kind of what it feels like. When I notice somebody like kind of stopping before the finish line um, and recognizing that, we try to nip that in the bud and make sure they're aware that like there is still distance to go. And uh, being aware of that, is you know as a manager or as a leader is something that i think is super important because yeah i mean like for instance a great great example uh you know, i might be working with my engineering team trying to integrate some part of our product with a vendor and you know sometimes you know we'll kick something over the fence have them set a meeting and uh it just won't it just doesn't happen because something you know they couldn't get schedules to align then it'll just kind of fall by the wayside and that's a missed opportunity because we, you know, we could have done something really amazing with that vendor partner, or whatever that technology solution is. So, you know, that's a great example of like, it's not sales, but uh, they could have, you know, they, they could have continued to persist to make sure that that meeting happened and that, you know, the value from that meeting, whether, you know, we use that vendor or not, but like understanding, you know, that actually happening is, is super important. So it's not just, you know, trying to get a brand client or trying to get, you know, a customer to buy necessarily. It's sometimes it's just like making sure that you're following up with people so that you can, you can do something collaborative. Now, hold on for a second. James just talked about onboarding. Do you have a really clear process for onboarding? You probably do. If you're growing fast, you probably have someone that's, that's really takes ownership of that. Uh, I really want you to think about something that I've seen really work well. It's not just onboarding from a sense of you know, paperwork and laptops and you know, phones and all of the things that go with that. It's about onboarding them to your culture, onboarding them into the values of the company. How much time do you truly spend in you know, setting expectations of how they should work together, how they should perform, 
and how they should really push beyond their barriers. That is about great onboarding. So if you add that little element into your onboarding process, then you will have more engaged uh, employees. They will take more ownership. And that's really the key. So back to the interview with James. Is persistence in your company values? Um, in, in, in terms of the way that we, the way that our culture works, yes. In terms of like written in our company values, uh, it probably should be. It probably should be. Um, I think there's a, that's definitely part of the read between the lines. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think one of the, one of the really important things that we've learned is uh, a lot of the folks that have entered the space that we, we effectively created, they, they typically fizzle out. And, and a big part of that is lack of persistence. Uh, like they get a couple of no's and then they're, they're out or they get to a point of contention or, or a, a level of friction that they're not comfortable pushing through. And uh, being a startup founder and starting any business for that matter requires the ability to be okay in extremely high friction environment where, um, you know, no is just something that you're going to hear so much and you have to not be emotionally, you, you can't have an emotional reaction to it. You just have to recognize it and then understand how to navigate the no. You know, I bet this is a part of your core mindset around persistence. That's fair to say, right? Yeah. How, how do you coach others to can truly be persistent day in and day out? Because there's probably many opportunities where people want to, to, to stop pushing. There's like, you know, I've already asked them four times, James. How do you continue to coach? Is it a coaching kind of process or is it something different? Um, it's a coaching process to, a, to an extent. Uh, and then there's the rec then there's recognizing that this person just isn't going to be able to do it. Um, and that happens, you know, and that's fine. You know, it's actually good to recognize that sooner than later. Um, and I think it's also important to note that there is a line of where, you know, you could be, you, there's a line that you could, there's a threshold of persistence that become annoyance and you want to make sure that you ride that line, <laughs> uh, regardless of, you know, regardless of what it is. So, you know, there's persistence, being aggressive, and then being annoying. Uh, and, you know, it's finding that balance and being self-aware and understanding kind of where, where to, to fall there. But going back to like your initial question, coaching, uh, recognizing that somebody might not be able to, or might not be willing to and getting them outside their comfort zone. Some people get outside their comfort zone and then they really thrive and they realize like, oh, wow, like no 99.9999% of the time in business doesn't necessarily mean no, it just means not right now. Or I don't understand why is usually what no means is I don't understand why I should say yes, or right. I'm not willing to take the time to understand why yes is the right answer here. Uh, Let me break in here. James just talked about getting out of your comfort zone. Now, I know what this is like because I got into a comfort zone within my own business. I led a fast growth company and I was growing from zero to five million and I got complacent. I really got let success, you know, teach me that it should be easy and it should be, you know, comfortable. But the reality is that was the time I should have kept growing. And I actually felt the pain, not only myself, but my team wasn't growing either. I wasn't expecting them to grow. So I share this with you because I actually wrote a book about it. It's called The Trap of Success. I don't know if you've seen it, but I, I will tell you, this book really will help you understand uh, a little bit about going beyond your comfort zone. And it really is about facing those fears, about growing and evolving as a leader. And it really shares a, a, a you know kind of a dark story. That business I was running, I actually went bankrupt because of something that happened. I trusted my best friend, and, and I lost $3 million on a deal. Now, yes, I take responsibility for that, but the, the journey back was the key. The trap of success was really the cause of everything. Now, I share this with you because I'd love for you to continue to get out of your comfort zone so that you can be the leader to get your employees out of their comfort zone. Now, back to the interview with Shane. What have you learned in coaching others to, to be more persistent? Um. 
there are two types of people. There are people that learn how to ride that line and they find the, the, that, that, that threshold and they understand how to be successful by, by and being self-aware of where that threshold lies. And then there are some people that never even get to the threshold and quit. Um, and, you know, I've had sit, folks in our sales organization where they're like, can't do this. Uh, it's not, I'm not comfortable doing it. And we're, we'll try to explain to them, like, this is like, this is what you have to do to be a successful salesperson, period. Like you not, whether it's a rapify or anywhere. And it's a great, I mean, we, we could teach you how to do it here. Uh, the other, and, and, and that's, and it actually, it's okay. Cause there are folks that think they're salespeople that really just shouldn't be salespeople. Um, and then there are folks that like never realize it. They never find that, like that threshold. They, they either fall, they fall short over and over and over and over again. And you try to show them here, if you just continue to, if you just pushed a, a little harder, if you just, you know, added one or two more touch points into that, you know, into that, you know, that cadence, you probably would have been successful. Um, and they just never, they never get there. So. You know, I think the what the people that I really value and the 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 my favorite my favorite employees to um, to nurture and and develop are the ones that you could tell like they just need they need a they need somebody to help them find where that threshold lies so they could you know they could capitalize on on just that self awareness right uh, and that's really awesome to see as a founder and as a as you know as a, a manager. Uh, it's really cool to see somebody who, you know, has promise. They just need to focus and understand how to like how to manage that component of being successful. Persistence is a component, right? So, do you have any rituals inside your day to day, inside of meetings, where persistence becomes a part of it, like the recognition or anything like that? Um, well, in terms of like follow up, when we follow up. Uh, the power of thank you um, and just like, you know, and acknowledging and empathy within a, within any conversation, like acknowledging that, like understanding who you're talking to and what they might be going through on their side of the fence, right? In their shoes. I think when you approach any conversation, whether it's in business, personal, you know, et cetera, when you have, when you approach it with empathy, it, it, it ends up creating this, like it ends up just lowering the uh, lowering the guard a little bit and allowing you to connect more on a human level than in purely like a business, a business level. And that, that always makes things you know, way more seamless. It also allows you to get to yes a lot, a lot faster. You know, maybe we'll take a break from the persistence here to, to just like tune in to some of the, the mistakes you might've made along your journey for fast growth, James. So what comes to mind on, one or two of those top mistakes. Wow, there's there's a lot. I made a lot of mistakes. I think okay. Well, so first off, I think it's a you need to be okay with like making mistakes. Like making mistakes as a founder is something that is going to be your best teacher. The the your your biggest failure actually is making a mistake and then making it over and over and over and over again and not understanding why or learning from it. That's true. Like to me, that's like the definition of failure. Um, so yeah, I think that that's number one is like when you do make mistakes over and over again, um, get to the get to the root of why. Because like for for instance, for me, my, from my state my my standpoint, um, I've made the, the mistakes that I make uh, that are typically frequent have a theme, and that theme usually has something to do with just the way I'm wired. Like there are certain parts of my personality that will. Uh, allow me to find myself making a, a, a similar flavor of mistake. And I think that's something that happens with pretty much everyone. You know, there's, everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses. And sometimes those weaknesses allow you to make mistakes. Um, and I think recognizing that and being able to go, okay, oh, this is, one, this is one of those times where I'm making a mistake that I've made before. And then knowing how to make the, the right levers appear so you can start pulling those levers until you, uh, until you solve for it. Um, it's, it's another reason why self-awareness is so important inside of, of leadership. Yeah, totally. James, when you think about, um, you know, the defining moments of your leadership, what, what's one moment in time that you could share with us 
that really changed or rewired you so that you could be the leader that you are today? Um, recognizing that every time you have a success or every time you have like a really amazing, like, you know, triumph and, and achievement, recognizing that the, uh, there's a pitfall that's right around the corner and you got to be ready for it because it's very rare that people go up and up and up and just never ever deal with, uh, you know, some sort of trial or tribulation. It's, it's pretty normal for everyone that there's ebbs and flows. I mean, it's the way the world works, but recognizing that, um, when you're going at, at, right after that, you know, celebrate the success, you know, live in the moment, but recognize that there are things that you're going to deal with that, uh, that might not be as fun to deal with right around the corner and just be ready. That yeah. allows you to adapt, react a lot faster. And just, it's again, and going back to that self-awareness. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your journey here and, and talking to us a little bit about what Rapify does, but really about the culture and leadership that drives your company to fast growth. So James, thanks for being on Growth Think Tank. Yeah, thanks for having me. Wow, what a great interview. I love talking to someone about you know fast growth culture and, and being the kind of leader that you really want to get people to get outside their comfort zone. If you can't really engage people to grow and be uncomfortable, then you really will struggle as a company. And I really want you to think about what that means today. It may not be persistence to you. It may be something else that you want. Maybe it's more ownership. Maybe it's more um, you know empathy inside the work. You have to decide how to engage people as a leader, and that's really what's most important about today's interview. Persistence is important, but it's not everything. So thanks for tuning in here to Grow Think Tank. Hopefully you're sharing this with someone that you know wants to be a better leader and evolve as a leader. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.